Good morning. Today I will counter an oft-repeated claim we've heard entirely too many times. Blame the owner, not the dog. Dogs aren't the problem. Irresponsible owners are. When will they realize this? This point about who or what is to blame is very tedious. Being a dog does not prevent you from being the direct cause of something, which is really what we're talking about here. Regardless of why a dog does what it does, it alone remains the sole cause of the actions it carries out. Suppose you are out walking and minding your own business. When along comes a dog, either barreling towards you at full speed whilst on the loose, or perhaps desperately tugging at its lead in order to get close enough to clamp onto your leg. The stock response is that all of this is entirely the fault of the owner, despite the fact that it was the dog being the obvious aggressor, and not the owner. The automatic response you will typically get from a dog apologist is that this is all down to the way the dog was trained, and perhaps the way it was brought up in the home, and all the rest of it. The problem is with the thing that wants to charge at you in public. Eliminate that, and you will see how much better life can be when there is no necessity for all this intervention and management. Dog defenders reflexively take up for dogs, seemingly no matter what they do. These apologists attempt to downplay the severity of any given violation perpetrated by a dog. The shocking implication often seems to be that we must simply accept whatever the dog does. The dog is a stupid animal that doesn't know any better, or it was abused at some point in the past, or the owner hasn't trained or socialized the dog properly, or the owner did something else wrong, even if they were not present when the dog attacked. A classic example is that of a dog digging out from under a fence and subsequently breaking loose to attack another living thing, which is usually a nearby child, and sometimes another dog, or a different kind of pet such as a cat, or perhaps a poor jogger, who is very unfortunate to be in a neighborhood where the real possibility of loose dogs is an everyday reality. There's also the fact that many dogs will simply walk or run out when a gate isn't closed properly, or when a door is left open, even for a brief moment. The dog will voluntarily leave its owner's property to go off and do its own thing, now, do you honestly think the owner wants the dog to get out and attack someone else's pet or their child? At a minimum, we can say that the dog getting away runs counter to the desires of the owner. To put it another way, the dog obviously has its own drives and motivations. It is an instinct-driven and bestial predator, and it has a will that is independent of the owner. Dogs may be domesticated animals, but they've obviously come down from wolves, and they have clearly retained the instincts of their wild progenitors. Dogs operate on instincts, and they enjoy inflicting harm on other organisms. They have prey drives, and if humans suddenly stopped feeding them, they would instinctively attempt to capture and dismember small animals or other living things as a means of survival. It would come quite naturally to them. All of this is built into these critters, and even when they are very well fed by humans, they will still attack wild animals, pet cats, or sometimes people at random. They do not even do it in order to survive. But because they are predators, violence is their bread and butter. It is hardwired into every dog in existence, and there is bugger all that an owner can do about the instincts their dogs are pre-programmed with. No amount of training or intervention will ever change what a dog is, at a fundamental level. But we can go even further still, and we are not nearly done here. For all this talk of responsible dog ownership, and all the rest of it, dogs still manage to cause every major problem that is supposed to be addressed by more responsible ownership. Thus far, dog owners themselves have proven that their own solutions will never work. To paraphrase and add a bit to a post I recently shared from the web, even if the answer to this problem were training and all that other crap, you will never have a scenario where every single last dog owner will handle their dogs the way these apologists imagine they are supposed to handle their dogs so as to prevent them biting and barking all day, and all the rest of it. In point of fact, 
I recently had to remind a dog nutter that they cannot trust every dog owner to do whatever magical thing they are supposed to do, to make dogs not a public menace and everything else dogs are. So, as long as people are allowed to own dogs, many of them will continue to have dogs they do not train or socialize or whatever else. But I would be remiss if I neglected to mention that dog aggression and the fact that many of them go on the attack is but one issue, and there are many things that training will never address or come close to touching. But the problem is that there is a creature that's willing to do that in the first place. It's not whether or not there is someone to restrain the unhinged beast. That's just an intermediary. And there is no getting around it. Even if you wish to say that dogs cannot help themselves, they nevertheless remain the sole cause of what they themselves do. Dog owners are certainly guilty of having dogs, but that does not get the dog off the hook for being exactly what it is. The way I see it, you can blame the owner and the dog. It is not an either-or. Having said that, there are certainly times when it is the dog, and the dog alone, which is the problem. As a simple real-world example, I encounter instances of this all the time, in real life. Because again, I have been in many negative situations where there would have been no issue at all, had there been no dog present. No conflict or tension born of dog-originated aggression or intrusiveness. No beef or drama over what a brain-dead mammalian science experiment does on instinct. A brain-dead mammalian abomination which some random bloke insists on having for whatever mysterious reason. Clearly we can see that if, by simply subtracting the dog, you arrive at an alternate scenario where there is absolutely no problem, then you have identified the problematic variable in this equation. It is the damned dog, for heaven's sake. What else is it going to be? You may as well blame ghosts or late capitalism. And while the latter, capitalism in general really, is actually a huge driver of dog nuttery, it is not what's causing dogs to be how they are, from the jump. Dogs are constantly getting themselves and their owners into trouble, and they are constantly the cause of grief for everyone around. Companies and corporations that profit off of dogs as well as various dog-related products and problems are simply indifferent to all of these negative externalities. But the bottom line is this. If it is a dog that tries to bite your ankle, maul your child to death, or slaughter your livestock, Bringing up anything else is a distraction. The core problem is the presence of the dog and all other dogs, dogs in general. Now, I want to go back to something. Earlier, I referred to dogs as domesticated animals. By the way, when I say domestic, I mean just that, as in originating from within, not unlike a domestic terrorist. So it is used in that context. Not necessarily this whole business about dogs supposedly being domesticated. I feel I should briefly address this as well. As one Redditor put it, dogs are domestic animals that are kept around and shoved in everyone's faces because companies like Purina and PetSmart need to make money. Now, let's be clear about something. Domesticated does not equate to safe, and the only meaningful thing we can say about dogs in this context is that dogs are basically helpless without humans, but they are not safe for us to be around, just as tamed wild animals like chimpanzees and tigers are not. So, what does domesticated mean? How is this word defined? Of an animal, tame and kept as a pet or on a farm. At face value, this is not inaccurate. After all, dogs are kept as pets, and sometimes on farms, but curiously, they are calling dogs tame. So, what does tame mean then? This is where it gets strange and confusing. Tame is defined as Of an animal, not dangerous or frightened of people, domesticated. According to such definitions, which are often the very first you will encounter, these two words are synonyms. And yet there is often a strong distinction made between animals that are tame as opposed to those that have been domesticated. And while dogs are typically not frightened of people, 
this does not make them not dangerous. Dogs even make terrible pets, as I have elaborated on before. This word, domestication, refers to a process of selective breeding. But it does not tell us anything essential about how dogs are, behaviorally speaking. The problem with the word domesticated is that many people take this to mean not dangerous. They interpret it as an adjective that tells us something meaningful about dogs, or they think it implies compatibility. But as we know full well, and as I have shown before, dogs are fundamentally incompatible with humanity. The list of things that can trigger a dog to become aggressive, or to attack a person who is not a threat to it at all, is as long as the Empire State Building is tall. All you have to do is wear a hat around a dog or deliver a package to an address, and you will quickly be disabused of the notion that dogs are a good fit for human society. Remember, the common dog is an animal that is known to respond to many ordinary and innocuous human behaviors with aggression, with angry barking, following, lunging, even biting.